Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Derek Morris. And I'm Anthony Kent, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to this program. Derek, I'm excited about this program. It's very practical. We're talking about the importance of premarital counseling. I know it can bless a lot of families within our churches. Exactly. Our, our guests are Dr. Claud Claudio Consuegra and his wife, Dr. Pamela Consuegra. I had to really concentrate to say those names. A great team in ministry and some real practical insights that will bless us uh, in our discussion today. Fantastic. And they've got a very significant responsibility as well, haven't they? They have. They are Family Ministries Director and Associate Director for the North American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So there are literally tens of thousands of families looking to them for guidance and leadership. Exactly. Yeah. So we're glad you joined us for this important topic. Uh, Premarital counseling. I, I had someone visit me one day and said, could you perform a wedding for us uh, in a couple of hours? I said, well, we need some premarital counseling. He said, I don't need that. I've been married before. That's the attitude that some people have about premarital counseling. But we'll discover in Ministry of Motion today that premarital counseling is a tremendous blessing to any relationship. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, the importance of premarital counseling. And I want to welcome Claudio and Pamela Consuegra. Happy to have you here. Thank you. Glad and to be here. And here you are, your um, family ministries director and associate director for the North American Division yeah. of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So you have a lot of families under your care. We do. Well, we have a lot of families and families in the making, and that's what we're talking about today, the preparation. So let's marriage. start with the importance of premarital counseling. I shared a humorous story in the opener about someone said, oh, I don't need that. I've been married before. <laughs> uh, what about young people, Pamela? What's their attitude towards uh, pr preparation, premarital counseling? Well, I think in the same manner, um, Dr. Morris, it's just not on their radar. And this really, you know, we became aware of this when we started going into high schools and we started doing programs on relational building. How can young people have healthy relationships? And one exercise we did with them, we didn't set it up. We just wanted to kind of do an, exp do an experiment to see what their thinking was in regards to this. So we gave them the assignment. We divided them into groups and we asked each group, this is how we set it up. We said, you have just made a decision, you're dating someone, and you think this is the person you want to marry. Now what we want you to do is plan for your life together. In 100% of the groups, they planned their wedding. No premarital counseling. The actual event that only lasts maybe an hour or, or two hours. They, they planned the dress they were going to wear, the flowers, the, I want a limousine, uh, you know, what the bridesmaids' dresses were going to be, and even the young men. It was really interesting to watch the young men get involved in this process of planning the wedding. And at the conclusion of this, each, each group presented their wedding plans. And I remember when they finished, we looked at the groups and we said, where have you planned for your life together? You planned for the wedding, but you haven't planned for your marriage. And the realization in these young people, you know, they just looked at us as we began to unfold to them the importance of planning for their lifetime together and how instead young people spend months, literally months, and thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars planning for an event that's only going to last a couple hours. And in turn, they spend no time at all planning for their life together. You know, it's kind of a surprise to me, uh, Claudio, that many of them may have been in homes where marriages have failed. It would, I would think they would really want to make sure uh, that they found the right person. You know, it's interesting that most young people today still believe that marriage is the ideal thing to happen in their lives. They all want to be married one day. 
At the same time, they have that very fear. They come from broken homes or they have a lot of friends that come from broken homes. And so they have the fear of going into that commitment. And that's why it is important then to prepare so that it doesn't happen to them. But you know, a lot of people spend more time preparing to get a driver's license than they do right. preparing for a lifetime together. Right. So a, a, a proper preparation can reduce the great risk of divorce. In fact, they have said as much as 80% reduction in the risk of divorce. Mm -hmm. So it is a huge advantage to couples to prepare for marriage properly. Uh, later in the program, we'll talk about what you would like to accomplish in that Pro in that process and also we'll talk about some resources but let's talk about different age groups if we can. Mm -hmm. I remember a couple came to me and they were a more mature couple a and they had the perspective well you know maybe one was a, uh, a widower, uh, maybe one was not married but, but much older than a 20 year old. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it seems that more mature couples have the idea well we kind of know who we are and what we want. Right. What, why is premarital counseling important uh, at that age of life? We all have our certain amount of, uh, I guess we could call it emotional baggage. More baggage as you get older? <laughs> absolutely. You're absolutely right. And we have families now sometimes to take care of. And so we have to talk about the blending of the two families. We have to talk about things like health issues at that age now, retirement, uh, what happens with finances. All those things are things that could complicate the relationship unless they're dealt with. And so it is important to have some premarital preparation at any age, not just for the younger ones, but really at any age. You see, the need for premarital education doesn't go down as you get older. Mm. In fact, many people that are now older in life have already experienced a failed marriage. Right. And so those statistics that their marriage will fail again, it just goes up. Mm. You know, 40% today of all first marriages fail, 60% of all second marriages fail, mm. and 73% of all third marriages fail. It gets worse. It gets yeah. worse. And so that only expresses the need even increases for premarital counseling as, as our age increases or our life experiences increase. So that person that stopped by my church when I was a young pastor and said, I, I don't need premarital counseling, I've been married before, actually should have said, I really need it. Absolutely. Because I've already been through one relationship. Because they think they have learned from the past, and in reality, most often than not, they haven't. Mm -hmm. And so they carry the same problems from the past, carry it into a new relationship, and just make the problems even bigger. I remember an older couple, they, uh, they got married very quickly. They both lost a spouse. Uh, the, the husband was looking for the wife that he'd never had, and mm -hmm. she was looking for a husband as great as the one she'd had before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And both of them were disappointed right. because mm -hmm. they, they rushed in without premarital counseling. Which is one mm -hmm. of those things that in good premarital counseling you can talk about is that idealistic distortion that takes place in couples that are not married yet. They think this is going to be the <laughs> best marriage. We're not going to get a divorce. Everybody gets a divorce. Not even We're have not problems, have maybe. Problems. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So premarital counseling provides them, provides them with the opportunity to explore their differences and their similarities to see how they can benefit from that relationship instead of causing it to, to break up because they haven't really gotten to know each other better. And, and I think that really says it all, the unrealistic expectation of marriage. Yeah. You know, I grow up thinking that when I get married, I picture myself as sitting on the porch and there's a, a cute white little picket fence outside and we're sitting in our rocking chairs and we're, we're going to live happily ever after. You know, divorce happened to my parents or to my neighbor, but divorce could never happen to me. So we go with these uh, idealistic preconceptions of what it's going to be like. We really need some help as we prepare and after the break we'll talk about uh, what should be accomplished in a uh, in a good premarital counseling program. And we'll also be talking on the program about some resources that could help you and, and when to know you need to refer to someone who has more training than you have. Practical topic, the importance of premarital counseling. We'll be right back with Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, the importance of premarital counseling. Our guests, Claudio and Pamela Consuegra. 
Good to have you with us today. Thank you. Now, we talked about the importance in our first uh, segment, uh, why we should have premarital counseling. Let's just paint a scenario. A young couple courting for a couple of years, perhaps. Finally, they, one proposes to the other. They agree they're going to be married in 12 months. Uh, Pamela, where would they start in terms of the premarital counseling? Is that something they do a month before the wedding? Or what, what's the time frame that would be sensible for a couple planning to be intentional? Well, actually, if a couple is thinking about it 12 months before the marriage, then I applaud them. That's a wonderful step in the right direction because typically a couple will come to a pastor and say, I want to get married. And the pastor says, when is the wedding? And, oh, next month or in a few weeks. So a year out, that's a wonderful scenario. In fact, uh, the, to me, the ideal setting would be when a couple is just dating. They're not even talking. They're not even engaged but they're just dating and they think maybe they would like to get married, that would be the best time to approach the pastor and say, can you take us through a premarital preparation type program? So then they have time to grow together in that way, in that direction. Let's say that in that process they find out that there are things they're not happy with, compatible with, comfortable with. Well, then there's plenty of time to make changes, uh, learn more about each other, those kinds of things. Problem is when you're only given about a month as a pastor, about a month to prepare this couple, and then you find that they have serious issues, by then the invitations are out, mm. the hall, reception hall is secure, the dress has been bought, you know, everything has been There's a lot of pressure, isn't there? Mm. And so people will ignore those red flags mm. and move forward in the direction of marriage. So it's better to take that time to learn and prepare properly. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a real paradigm shift to say we could even do some premarital counseling before engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, I, is that a, a new trend or is that something that you've seen in your ministry working with couples? I said that's the ideal. Oh, the ideal. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's so, the direction right. that we would like to see more couples go toward. I had one couple do that. They actually came and they said, we're definitely thinking about this. But certainly you're saying there's not all of the pressure of a deadline. Right. Mm. Uh, and if, as you explore, you say, well, maybe we should just be good friends, mm -hmm. uh, makes a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. as a pastor, what I normally did when I was a church pastor, I would talk to the congregation and my young people, especially on a regular basis, and remind them of that. Hey, I see that you're dating. Just keep it in mind. Whenever you're ready for my help, I'd be more than happy to do it. Oh, we're not engaged yet. That's good. This is the reason mm -hmm. I would like to encourage you to do it now. So if we keep talking to the congregation about that before they're engaged, hopefully they'll get the point and prepare properly that way. Well, that, that's one takeaway from, from the program that I think is really valuable, is to help couples who are just dating know that at some point, if you're looking seriously at this relationship, some premarital counseling could be really helpful. Uh, Pamela, what does that look like for a person that says, well, is this like a one, one hour session or do you have to meet for six months? What, what's a typical uh, premarital counseling program look like? Is there such a thing as a typical program? Well, we're, we're going to talk specifically about some, some tools, but it's really hard to say to definitively because some of it may depend on some of the issues that okay. emerge. There are some couples that uh, the counselor or the person working with them may recommend some extended counseling takes place. And that's why we talk to couples and we say, don't set the date yet. I see. You know, involve yourself and take opportunities of premarital counseling before the date is set. And that way you can be sure when you set the date that you have made the appropriate preparations, addressed any issues, you see, there's so many reasons why couples should engage in this process. For example, couples think that they've had all the conversations they need to. They think they know each other well. But every time when we meet with a couple and go through this process, there's always something that emerges as, I didn't know that. You know, we've never talked about that. And premarital counseling gives couples the opportunity to discuss issues that they may not even have thought was important. You know, that's not something we're facing right now as a dating couple. That's not on our agenda, so to speak, or our day-to-day -day life, and so they don't talk about it. But premarital counseling kind of 
forces them to talk about some of these issues, and that's why it's so important. You know, I like that idea, you take as long as you need. That's right. Uh, because the goal is solid foundation for moving into a relationship. I had an experience as a young pastor where a couple came and they were obviously very intentional and they wanted to prepare for marriage, but it became very quickly evident that it was out of my level of expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, the young man, fine young fellow said, I don't know, I have a problem when my fiance touches me physically, I, I get this negative reaction and I, I don't know what it is. So did I do the right thing, Claudia, when I said, uh, let's find a good professional counselor and, and do that first and then we'll do the marriage preparation? That shows a lot of maturity on your part. You know, as pastors, we're, we can't be everything to everyone. We have a certain amount of training in some areas, but not every pastor has specific training in counseling. So when you know the limits of your expertise, the best thing is to refer them to a professional. You don't have to be the champion and try to save the whole world and maybe cause them more damage. So yes, for instance, and we'll talk more about a specific tool again, uh, once you realize that a couple has specific needs and you can't provide for those needs, then refer them to a professional. And that would be back to something you said, Pamela, that you take as much time as you need. That's right. It could be longer for one couple than for another. Right. And we really want to encourage those listening to this that it is not a sign of weakness to admit that perhaps you don't have the skills to deal with this issue. In fact, that's a sign of strength. When you come to the point where you realize additional help is needed, I may not be the best one to provide this. That's the most loving gift, I guess, to the young couple as they prepare. After our break, we're going to talk about some tools. Uh, we'll have some things on our website at ministryinmotion.tv, uh, some web access that will help you to prepare and also to learn your limitations. Important topic today, premarital counseling, preparation for a strong and healthy marriage, We'll be right back with some tools after the break. We hope you'll stay tuned. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, the importance of premarital counseling. We're joined by our co-host, Anthony Kent. Thanks, Derek. It's been a great discussion with Claudio and Pamela Consuegra. And for those who are just joining us, you are Family Ministries Director and Associate Director for the North American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So you've got lots of families under your care. Yeah. And in this segment, we want to talk about some practical tools. You have uh, hundreds of pastors that you coach, but there are thousands of pastors around the world that may be watching this program. Uh, give us some practical tools uh, that could help a pastor in providing solid premarital counseling. Well, here in North America, we have been encouraging all our pastors to be trained in a program called Prepare and Rich. Uh, it's a, an evaluation uh, of the couple to begin with, uh, but also the program helps the, the pastors take the couples through that premarital counseling process with, with the couples again. And so it's a very practical program. It only takes about one day to be trained to become facilitators. And then the couple would go online, take this assessment, this inventory, which is not a test. It's not a mm -hmm. pass-fail. It's not going to say you shouldn't get married unless mm -hmm. it's a serious situation. It just simply gives them an inventory of their relationship. And then based on that result, the results of the inventory, then the facilitator, say the pastor, can take them through you asked, you asked earlier about how many sessions, four, six, eight, ten sessions, depending on the needs of that particular couple. So that's the tool that we recommend the strongest. It's called Prepare and Rich. Could uh, a pastor that's watching find out, I guess they could Google Prepare, is it forward slash Enrich? Uh, actually, prepare-enrich.com. Okay, prepare-enrich.com. That's their website. And do you also have a website that has some resources uh, dealing with premarital counseling or would you simply send them on to prepare-enrich.com? If they go there directly, they can find a counselor or facilitator in their area, okay. someone that's already trained. Uh, they can go on our website and find a Seventh-day Adventist pastor or counselor who also may be trained or who may be able to offer uh, any kind of premarital counseling. And our website is AdventistFamilyMinistries.com. 
And if they wanted to actually be trained, would they go to the same website, prepare-enrich.com, and find out about a workshop in their area? Because they're going on all the time. So yes, they can go to their local or to see if there's a local training going on and then participate. And again, it's only one day training, so it's not like they have to go for weeks uh, to get a degree to, to, to be able to offer it. Mm -hmm. Now, would you recommend, Pamela, is it better for a pastor to be trained and do premarital counseling? Is that a bonding experience or, or is it just as acceptable to refer every couple to a Christian counselor in the community? What, what's your preference there? Of course, our desire would be that every pastor is trained in the use of this tool. Uh, that training, I think, is going to really enrich the pastor's ministry because then the pastor, who hopefully already has a relationship with this couple, can continue to just build that relationship as he or she works with them through this process, through this training process, and then be the one to bless their marriage together. A couple came to me one time for, uh, to deal with their issues in marriage, a young couple literally young, we're talking 20 and 17, she mm. actually had to get permission to marry. Mm. And, and as they were facing these problems, I'm, I'm trying to get to know them better. And I said, well, why would the pastor marry you? And she said, we met with the pastor for half an hour. Mm. And at the end of that time, he said, you are perfect for each other. Mm. That pastor evidently had had no training, no didn't training. take the couples through any kind of preparation, mm. didn't give them any resources, just basically got to know them and said, you're perfect. Prepare and Rich provides a lot of information for the pastor and for the couple so that they can deal with those issues that are important. For instance, communication, which to, my, uh, to us anyways is one of the most important ingredients in a good healthy relationship. Conflict resolution, family and friends. What, what about your family of origin could affect your current relationship? What would you like to keep from your family of origin out of your relationship. All those things can be explored in a good premarital preparation program, which are in fact, uh, which is in fact what this program trains pastors to do. And you can't do that in 20 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Anthony, you have a question as you think about the importance of premarital counseling. Sure, a, a pastor, if they're wanting to explore the compatibility of you know, a prospective couple, mm -hmm. other than prepare and enrich, is, is there any other resources that you'd suggest, perhaps a, a good video series or a, mm -hmm. a, a good book or something like that? Mm -hmm. What would you recommend? Mm -hmm. There are a number of books that I would recommend. One of them is called Preparing for Marriage by Dennis Rainey. And it's actually more like a workbook. Mm -hmm. So the couples can buy one each and take mm -hmm. one chapter at a time and it asks questions for them to explore. Because that's the key. A lot of couples can talk a lot, but they don't always explore important issues in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So Dennis Rainey, Preparing for Marriage. Uh, Norman Wright has a wonderful book called Before You Say I Do. That's also a very good manual. So those are good resources that I would recommend and they're not very expensive, easy to read and easy for them to follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're involved, you've, let's say you've had some basic training mm -hmm. and you're meeting with them, what are some red flags that might come up that you'd say, I, I need to refer to a professional? Are there some uh, kind of warning signs that that should alert us to saying this needs some more care? Well, there have been times when through, through the exploration and through the dialogue, one, one partner will bring up the issue, I was sexually molested mm -hmm. as, as a young person, and yet they've never discussed it. Mm -hmm. In fact, many times the other person wasn't even aware of it, and it just emerged as part of the discussion. Some of those are issues that we would refer to a counselor. In fact, that would be probably number one, abuse in any, in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be, f uh, say, sexual abuse from a parent or relative when they were small, physical abuse that's already taken in their relationship before they even get married, any kind of abuse in the relationship or toward them, mm -hmm. it's a number one flag mm -hmm. that you need to explore. Uh, another one is, and you mentioned that uh, or alluded to that, a breakup in their relation in their parents' relationship if they have had divorce in the past or divorce in their own life, mm -hmm. that's a red flag, mm -hmm. something that you need to explore. So we've got some websites that we can refer people to. Your website is called AdventistFamilyMinistries.com. AdventistFamilyMinistries.com, prepare-enrich.com, and of course you can go to our website 
at ministryinmotion.tv. If you'd like to watch this whole program again, I, I want to watch it again. Thanks for being with us, Thank Claudio you. and Pamela. It's been a powerful uh, learning experience for me, and I'm thankful that we can provide some resources that will help you to be effective in your ministry. Thanks for joining us today for Ministry in Motion. Again, you can go to our website at ministryinmotion.tv. You can also give us feedback or suggest topics that would be helpful as you prepare to be the leader that God wants you to be in your community. We're praying for you that God would use you to be the leader that He's called you to be. Thanks for joining us for Ministry in Motion today. We hope you'll join us next time. Until then, may God bless you in your ministry.